I want to share with you four key takeaways from the teaching session I ran in Fourth Valley Hospital yesterday, where I was a visitor teaching Santosh, David, and the rest of the team there about the early and optimal therapy in Crohn's disease. One, early treatment in Crohn's disease is absolutely critical to set your patient up for success. We know this clearly from profile now. We've been practicing this in Edinburgh for five to 10 years already. Early effective therapy means apt diagnosis for the vast majority of people with a biologic. The default infliximab plus azathioprine, adalimumab monotherapy will be a great option for many. Ustekenumab in the UK when it becomes biosimilar will also be very affordable in the second half of this year. Two, monitor carefully and optimize treatment. Optimize the current therapy you're on. And then number three, change therapy if the current therapy, once optimized, is not working. So we need to make sure that we're monitoring symptoms, blood, CRP, and the caroprotectin, as well as endoscopy and imaging. And if the patient is not doing well, we should move them on. After a TNF has failed, where do we go next? Well, here was the real bulk of the teaching I did yesterday. We have really three options now. One, the default has been to go to ustekinumab, but now we have rizinkizumab, a more targeted P19 blockade, Sequence shows us this is a more effective therapy. Second option would be to go on to uparacitinib, a JAK inhibitor, highly effective in Crohn's disease and works very rapidly too. And then we also have the option of moving patients across to vedolizumab, of which more in another video. And so you can then think about your TNF failing patient and move them depending on the disease profile, depending on the patient, the demographics and their risk factors, either on to ustekinumab or perhaps much better now on to rizinkizumab or on to uparacitinib, and then go from one of those to the other one if one or the other one isn't behaving as you would like it to over time. If the patient is on ustekinumab and not responding, then I would recommend moving that individual on to either rizinkizumab or uparacitinib, depending on those circumstances. And I would move a patient from eight weeks of stekinumab onto rizinkizumab, for example, in preference now for moving that patient onto four weekly optimized ustekinumab. Certainly, as we are right now, that would be the cheaper option. And then, fourth, which to me is a really critical teaching, and that is that it's inflammation that is damaging, not just to the gut, but it's inflammation that is damaging to the body. Active chronic inflammation increases the risks of not only um, the sequelae of Crohn's disease with fistulas um, and strictures, but it also increases the risks of infection, thromboembolic disease, and over time, even things such as major adverse cardiovascular events and malignancy. Of course, we need to balance up the risks and benefits. Of course, it depends on just how much inflammation there has been and over what time period. But nonetheless, I think far too often, we are hiding back due to theoretical or perceived risks of treatments and not um, addressing the real and ongoing risk of untreated Crohn's disease. Not least, of course, we should mention the impact it will have on the way a person feels, their psychological functioning, their quality of life, etc., etc. So there we are, four key takeaways. One, the importance of early therapy. That really is the way to set patients up for success. Two, optimize treatment early. We do that through close monitoring. Three, don't keep a patient on a treatment that's not working. Move them on, and we now have more effective therapies for those that need it. And four, it's active inflammation over time that is the danger. And the vast majority of the time, this will outweigh any perceived 
um, risk of any treatment. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with more tomorrow. Goodbye for now.